Well, good evening. I'm glad that you're with us this evening. Tonight, as we look at God's Word, we're going to look at three different individuals with three different responses to the Lord. One is a believer that walked away from the Lord, and as we'll see tonight, will walk back to the Lord. Another is someone who knows about the Lord, but chooses to walk away from the Lord and instead choose to live in the world and reject the Lord. And then the third is one that needs to receive the Lord and chooses to follow. Where are you tonight with the Lord? Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, I pray tonight that every one of us will look at our own relationship with the Lord where we are and where we need to be. Father, we pray tonight for those who need a healing touch upon their lives. Father, I pray for those who, who, Father, have been discouraged and need encouragement. Father, I am thankful for the new Bible study class that we're able to open up to encourage people that needed some encouragement. Father, I'm thankful for the many folks that are coming back to the, the Lord's house. Father, I pray for those that are in quarantine right now. Father, I pray your healing hand would be upon them. And now, Jesus, there are people watching tonight. They need a touch from you as well. Father, they may need encouragement because of family, because of finances, or, Father, some other thing in their life. And now we pray all these things, the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus, lifting our petitions up to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. grace of God we will carry on his love endures forever sing Give thanks with 
with a grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given jesus christ his son and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the lord has done Dear God, we come before you tonight with humble hearts saying thank you for your love and how you show it to each one of us. We pray, Lord, especially tonight on the list that we have of people who have needs, that you may be with those, our Father, who have experienced death in the family or those, our Father, who have had close friends. I pray, Lord, that you would give them hope for our future. Help them to understand that it is not the end, but it's the beginning of eternity where one day we'll all be together. And I pray, Lord, that you would watch over them. May your spirit be very close to them. I pray, Lord, for those who have medical problems, that you'll be with them as, as they have to make decisions. And even our Father, as the doctors do their work, I pray that they may have your wisdom as they make a diagnosis and as they continue to do the surgeries, help them, our Father, that they will think of the best for the people. And I pray, Lord, for each of those that we have known and still do know that are depressed. In this particular time, Lord, it's been very difficult for so many of our seniors, and I just pray that you'll, your Holy Spirit will be very close to them. Help them, our Father, that they will turn to your scripture and that they can feel the peace that comes from reading and from knowing in a relationship with you. And Lord, I just simply cannot pray, but, but what I ask for boldness for each of your children and especially our Father for those in the upper states in Washington, those, our Father, that have power and authority, I ask our Father, if they're your children, you'll give them boldness to realize that America needs repentance and to come back to you because we've walked off from the standards that you have given. And I ask, Lord, that we might even have a revival that it could spread and that our relationship to you, our Father, would come to each one of us as a priority. I pray, Lord, that we'll each turn inside of our own hearts and look way deep and see if that relationship is as it should be and if not lord help us to come close to you once again and be your children because obedience brings blessings and disobedience our father brings judgment and we ask and we beg our father that your spirit may cause conviction and that may each of us turn to you i pray lord that you would be with each of us that you can guide us so that we can be the people the men and the women that you want us to be may our church our father be the witness in this community that it can be and that it needs to be give us our father the love that needs to reach out i pray lord that you would help each of us to have a desire in our heart to want to serve you because lord if we want to we prepare for it, we save up for it, and we actually do it. So be with us, our Father, in a very special way. And I pray for our missionaries as they go to the many different countries. Lord, give them boldness, give them safety. But Lord, most of all, let their heart be close to you and that they will hear and follow the guidance that your spirit gives. You speak to them, Lord, 
and they do their work. They are committed, and for this we are grateful and thankful, our Father, to you for calling them. Help each of us, our Father, once again, I ask, to be a blessing to someone else in the way that we live, in the attitudes we have, and in the walk that we have, because even our neighbors, our Father, are looking at us and help us each to be that person that you want us to be. For I ask this in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. Well, tonight we continue in this series. I've entitled The Unexpected Kindness of God. We're looking at the book of Ruth, the wonderful Old Testament book of Ruth that was written during the time of the judges. It's a story of God's wonderful love and redemption. Tonight we're looking at the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 6 through 18, in a message I've entitled, Decisions That Determine Destiny. If you would, in honor of God's word, would you stand with me and I'll read it aloud. And you can read it from your, your Bibles on the screen. Or those of you at home can read it on the screen right now. Then she, talking about Naomi arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore, she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on their way to return into the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that, you may, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should say, if I should have an husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes at the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. This is one of the most famous verses in all the Bible, verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee, for, for whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou, where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also if I ought, but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the book of Ruth and the principles that are taught therein, that you are not a respecter of persons, but anyone that is willing to turn from sin can come to you and be part of your forever family. Father, I pray, Lord, that we will see this, and see the opportunities around us to minister, to care for others in need, and to share the gospel. 
Father, there may be someone here tonight that does not knew, know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Father, may they come to know you. Father, I pray for those watching over the internet that, Father, they may be watching and they're also searching for a right relationship with you. Father, I pray that this hour would be a blessed hour that they would return to come into you. And we pray this in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Well, the book of Ruth opens with a tragedy, but then when we get to the end, we see that it will end with a great victory. The book of Ruth is truly a rags to riches story of a young woman. And it shows us just how destructive it is to move away from God and leave the principles of God's Word. Some have called the book of Ruth a love story. We talked about that last time we were in the book of Ruth, a love story. A lot of people will think it's a love story about Ruth and Boaz, when in truth, it is a love story about God and you and me. Not only you and me here in this place or even watching over the internet, Friend, listen to me. God loves all people. It doesn't matter who they are, what language they speak, or where they are. God loves all people. And if you're here tonight, I want you to hear me. God loves you. And if you're watching over the internet, I want you to know God loves you. But never think that you're the only ones God loves. Because God loves all people. You know, we all need a good love story, don't we? I'm glad that the Bible is a love story between God and those that he loves. I heard about three college girls. They were in a Christian school and they, and they were praying one day about their hearts. One girl prayed, Lord, give us pure hearts. Another girl at the Christian college said, Lord, give us clean hearts. But then that third girl said, Lord, give us sweethearts. <laughs> now let me tell you, we all need a good love story. And all three girls said, Amen. Well, tonight we're going to look and see how the book of Ruth is a story about how God took a Moabite girl named Ruth and brought her out of a place of death and darkness and destruction and brought her into a covenant relationship. This is a story of one who was lost, who was saved. And it was a great salvation. God used Ruth because we see that Ruth was in the lineage of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's a picture of the truth that God loves all people. He's not a respecter of persons and there is no prejudice in the heart of God. And because there's no prejudice in the heart of God, Christian believer, listen to me. And you, there is no room for any of us to be prejudiced about someone else because of the color of their skin, the language that they speak. At the same time, I want to reinforce the truth that God established the nations and the borders at the Tower of Babel. And this business of breaking down borders and having a one world government, that is from the devil. And we're going to see that, that God spoke about that and that's the very principle at work here in the book of Ruth. Well, this passage opens with three widows, not one. Naomi had lost her husband. Orpah had lost her husband. And Ruth had lost her husband. Because when you go off into darkness, there's always a price to pay. And that was the truth about Ruth and Orpah and Naomi. Because Naomi had no business leaving the promised land and going into a land of paganism. Because of sin, they are left destitute. Listen to me, don't blame God when bad things happen when we get wrapped up in sin. Instead, praise God 
that he is willing to forgive and restore if we will turn back to him. Well, Ruth and Orpah, they are Moabites. And they are a picture of those who are outside of the family of God. Those who are lost. Those who are doomed and destitute. Again, Naomi had no business leaving the family of God, leaving the promised land and the people of God and going to live amongst those who were wrapped up in idolatry, those who were sinful people. Now church, we need to be friends with everybody and friendly with everybody, but we need to be careful about who we join ourselves to, who we make close relationships with. We need to be careful about that that we don't allow ourselves to get wrapped up in sinful behaviors that they adopt. But that's exactly what happened to Elimelech and Naomi. They went into Moab, but long before they left Judah and went into Moab, Moab had already gotten into them. You see, they were willing to join a culture of sin. In fact, God called Moab... God's wash pot. And what he meant by that was these were a people who were slaves to sin because they were like those washing, washing the feet of, of others. They were slaves to sin. The truth is, if we're not careful, we can all be slaves to sin. Those who are lost are wrapped up in sin. And you know, believers can walk away like Naomi and get caught up in sin. And a believer has no place for that. Naomi was supposed to be in, in the promised land, not off in Moab. But the fact that Naomi was getting up to leave Moab and return to the promised land is a picture of repentance. Some people will say that there can be salvation without repentance. But I'm going to tell you, the Bible teaches that except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Again, that's not the word of the pastor. That's the word of our master, Jesus Christ. Repentance is the same thing as belief. You don't really believe if you're not willing to repent. Repentance is not what saves you. We are saved by God's grace through faith. But if we really do place our faith in the Lord and receive His grace, there's going to be a changed life. There is going to be a repentance from sin. Well, let's take a look and unwrap these verses. Now, let's look first of all, because there is one widow in the place of defeat in verses 8 through 13. Naomi, again, is a picture of a child of God who has moved away from her Lord. And so Naomi leads the journey, but she has decided to repent and turn back to Israel. Let's first of all look at the cause of her defeat. It can be traced back to her decision to leave the promised land which again was against the commandment of God. Joshua 23, 7 warns that you come not among these nations, these that remain among you. Yet Naomi chose the forbidden path to Moab. Her action is the equivalent of denying one's faith. Church, every day we have decisions to make. Are we going to live for the Lord? Or are we going to deny our faith and live like the world? Unfortunately, Elimelech and Naomi chose to leave the Lord and live like unbelievers. They turned away from God and they turned to a land that worshipped idols and stuff. Proverbs 13 verse 15 tells us, Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of transgressors is hard. Listen, if you want to live a hard life, move away from the Lord and begin living like the world. Friend, that's not going to 
bring you happiness and joy. It will only bring destruction. No good ever comes from leaving the Lord, from walking away from His Word, and living like the world. Well, we see the cause of her defeat is because she left the Lord and His Word and His home. And so, now we see the completeness of her defeat. It is by Naomi's own words that you are able to see that she is completely defeated and she is stripped of all hope. First of all, she had no hope for the day. We see that in verses 8 and 9. Naomi has nothing with which to take care of herself or her two daughters-in-law. There is no income. There's no place to live. She has lost everything. And if you've lost everything, I can tell you that the Lord can be your hope today. Anybody ever been there? Listen, I'm not saying you didn't have money in the bank account. You may have had money in the bank account. You may have a home. But you come to that place where you realize that you're empty. You realize that there's no hope that was found in sin. Your life is destroyed. Listen, she lost it all because she went off to a sinful place. And also, she had no hope for tomorrow. She said her future was even bleak. She had no husbands, and she had no sons to take care of her. This was a horrible place for a woman to be in that day and time, in that culture. Can I tell you, that's a horrible place for any woman in any culture. And it's a horrible place for a man in any culture. Listen, when you find yourself wrapped up in sin a long way from the Father's house, you got to come to yourself. Remember, this is a story much like the story of the prodigal son who had moved away from the Father and found himself in the pig pen. Anybody been there before? Have you been there where you realized, you know, I, I'm not in a good place. I'm not where I should be. Listen, sin will do that to you. Well, third, we see the consequence of her defeat. Naomi actually encouraged Ruth and Orpah to return to a pagan lifestyle. Can you imagine that? Being a believer in God... And saying, you know, you need to go back to, to worship the devil. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But yet I see it all the time. Haven't you seen that? Where believers say, well, I know you don't believe like me, but go ahead and live like the devil. Listen to me, we are a watchman over people's soul. We ought to continually point people in the right direction. We're to be a light in a dark world. She had lost her ability to be a witness for the glory of God because she had so partaken in the sin of the world. Listen, Jesus told us the way we're supposed to be. He said we're to be the salt of the earth in Matthew 5, verse 13. But then he says, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. You know, there was a time in this nation when Christians were respected and pastors were highly respected. I remember when I first went into the ministry in my 20s that the non-Christian doctor never would charge the pastors in the community he still had high respect for them. And then came a fellow named Jim Baker. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And the sin that he got wrapped up in and, and the prosperity gospel of, of wanting money more than wanting the Lord. Let me tell you something. This old world lost respect for pastors and Christians and they not only saw it once, but they saw it repeated in other high-profile preachers. Listen, we need to be careful because 
We may not be a high profile Christian, but somebody's watching us. It may be that grandchild. It may be that nephew or niece. It may be that family member or that neighbor. They're watching us. And we need to be careful about how we live because when the salt loses its savor, it's good for nothing but to be thrown out and trodden under the feet of men. What we are seeing going on in America right now is a repeat in many ways of what we saw in communist Russia. You see, there was a, a Christian leader named Rasputin who has often been referred to as the Holy Devil. He got involved in the royal family and led them into sin. And the people hated the church because of that. And it gave rise to a communist revolution. I'm going to tell you something. Here in America, Christians need to rise up. But as we rise up, listen to me, we better be light in the darkness. We are not saved by our works. But if we are saved, they should see our works and give glory to God. Listen to what Jesus went on to say. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Church, again, we're not saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works. Because if we want our witness to be powerful, we need for people to be able to see it in our works and our lifestyle. No child of God should ever be guilty of hindering someone else from coming to the Lord. Well, I need to move quickly because now we see another widow in the place of departure. You see, Orpah is a picture of a lost person who looks at the things of God and then turns away from God and decides to live for the devil. Listen, she wasn't necessarily a bad person the way the world would judge bad people. Do you see how she loves Naomi? She was probably a very sweet person. But she chose to live for the world instead of living for for the word of God. I heard about a young mother who was encouraging her daughter who was not acting like a Christian and said, Sweetie, don't you remember about how you're supposed to let your light shine? She said, Mama, my light got blown out a long time ago. Well, somehow, because Naomi's light had got blown out, Orpah turned away from the things of God and went back to live for the devil. Orpah was rocked by her reality. Listen, Naomi describes in graphic detail the difficulties these widows faced. And because of the way she talked about how that she could not have another son that they could be married to. That's an important point because it deals with something we're going to be looking at later called the kinsman redeemer. You see, in that culture, when a man died, there would be someone else in the family that would join up to help the, the widow. But Naomi says, there's nobody to help you, Orpah. Listen, she looked at her circumstances instead of looking at the Lord and decided it was in her best interest to go back and live amongst her people. Well, she returned to her relatives. Often family ties and affections are a hindrance to people coming to follow the Lord. They think, what will my family think if I became a Christian? How would, how would my friends think about me if I really became a Christian? And so Orpah turned back to live for the devil. And she remained in her religion. Evidently, even after she had heard 
and seen the things of the God of Israel, her idol worship was more important than living for the God of the Bible. Orpah is indeed an Old Testament picture of a lost person. Well, third, we see a widow in the place of decision. This is what makes Ruth so great. We see this in verses 15 through 18. Ruth is a picture of a woman who enters into the family of God because of a complete commitment. First of all, Ruth decides to follow. Even though Naomi has nothing to give her, Ruth decides she's going to follow Naomi no matter what. It's amazing how God speaks to the hearts of sinners. You ever witnessed to somebody and you thought, you know, that was a great presentation and they refused the Lord? And then there's somebody else that you witness to, you don't even get the words out right. And they, and, and they eagerly receive Christ. Church, as a pastor, I'm going to tell you, there are times when I preach and I think, man, that one hit it on the head and you give an invitation and nothing. There are other times when I preach and I think, you know, that makes no sense to me. How is it going to make sense to somebody else? And you give an invitation and people start coming forward and you think, Lord, it's all you. Folks, the truth is we always need to remember it's always all him. It's not us. If we'll just be faithful, he'll do the rest. I know I've shared the story of David Hawk with you before. He was one of my visitation partners. He wanted to go out and learn how to share the gospel. And, uh, and inevitably, we had this memorized plan that we would teach. And, and David would start fumbling and he'd look at me with that look of, jump in because I don't know what I'm doing. Well, we went to a door one time and he said, Pastor, whatever you do, don't help me. I've got to do this. And I said, okay, David. And sure enough, the guy that came to the door was rude. He said, oh, my wife sent church people again. David said, can we come in? He said, I'm watching a hockey game. And David said, yes, I know, but can we come in? He said, sure, come on in. And we sat down. And the guy turned up the hockey game. And uh, David started to talk with him. And he was being short with David. And all of a sudden, David got sick. I could tell he was going to throw up. I mean, he looked bad. And the guy looked at him. He said, are you okay? And he said, no, I'm not okay. And the guy turned the hockey game off. He said, what can I get you? Can I get you a glass of water? He said, no. He said, I've just got the most important thing in the world to share with you. And I just don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> I thought, this is a disaster. And he gets the track out. And he just starts reading it to the guy. And he gets to the end. And he said, would you like to ask Christ into your heart? He said, I sure would. I was shocked. <laughs> but not really. I had to learn that day too. That it's always God. If we'll just be faithful, he'll do the rest. Listen, I don't know what it was that Naomi shared, but I know this, it was all the Lord that did a work in Ruth's heart. Well, second, we see that Ruth decides by faith. She adopts Naomi and Naomi's land and Naomi's people, and Naomi's God. That's a great statement. I want your God to be my God. Listen, church, that needs to be the goal of everything that we do. As we distribute the food through the food pantry, we need to pray, Lord, help us that those who receive this will want Jesus in their heart. As we share a hot meal over Thanksgiving, as we give away the clothing through the clothing ministry, as we build a wheelchair ramp, or as we're out just witnessing. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Listen, it was by faith that Ruth came 
to receive the Lord. Listen, that's the way we all come to the Lord, by faith. And then finally, Ruth decides with finality. I like that word finality more than finally. Because when I say finally, what I mean by that is Ruth makes a total commitment with finality. There is nothing that's going to change Ruth's mind. It doesn't matter that Naomi has nothing to offer. She wants what God has to offer, not what man can offer. And what was back in Moab anyway? Idolatry, death, and destruction? No, Ruth decides she wants the Lord. Well, let me conclude because this story teaches us that our decisions will determine our destiny. Naomi's decision to return back to God would determine her destiny. She came back with absolutely nothing, but God would reward her repentance. Orpah turned her back on the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, and she went back to idolatry and will spend eternity separated from a God who loved her. But Ruth, Ruth decided she wanted the Lord. And she would by faith receive the God of Israel, the God of creation, not idolatry and sin, but a holy God that loved her. Listen, if you're saved and you've moved away from the Lord, would you return to him now? You can be sitting right in the pew and be a long way from the Lord. Do you need to return to him? Listen, you can be watching religious programming over the internet and be a long way from the Lord. Do you need to return to him? Maybe you're like Ruth. You don't know for certain that if you were to die, you'd go to heaven. You say, Pastor, I don't know for sure. How can I know for certain that I have eternal life? Jesus said, as many as receive him, to them gave he the authority, the right to be called the children of God. Do you need to receive him? If you do, would you pray and ask Christ into your heart right now? I'm going to ask every head be bowed and every eye closed. Father, I pray tonight for those that may need to receive the Lord. Father, I pray that right now, if there's someone watching this over the internet, someone here that needs to be saved. Father, I pray that right now, with all their heart, they would turn to Jesus. And with your head bowed, your eyes closed, if you need to pray and ask Christ into your heart, would you allow me to, to lead you in that prayer? The Bible says that if you will confess the Lord, that you can be saved. Would you confess him as your Savior and as your Lord? Just right now by prayer, just pray in your heart. God will hear the prayer of your heart. Dear God, I know that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross and was raised from the grave. I believe that with all my heart. And I know that I have sinned. And I come right now and ask for forgiveness. I am willing to turn from sin and receive Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. Come into my heart. Be the ruler of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now that as this invitation is offered, that if there's someone who needs to come, Father, even someone watching over the internet that needs to make that commitment, Father, I pray that right now with all their heart, they would put their faith and trust in Jesus and Jesus alone for salvation. And I pray this in the wonderful and powerful name of Christ, Jesus.